Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be taking you through one of my programs uh, from Miss Bikini Olympia part two. In fact, this is the final week, final session uh, of this program. So I'm so excited for my new program. I'm ready for a new challenge. I think for most of you, you can probably agree uh, when you've been working through like a six week training block by the last week, you're like, yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit tired of this option. So uh, my new program is gonna be coming to you live in my new workout app. So. I've been talking about Be A Fit for a hot minute now and we've had so many setbacks and just delays in terms of Apple approving different features and functions uh, and I guess there's a lot of applications that are being submitted into the Apple platform at the moment that has really put like a bit of a backlog on their I guess systems. So we were ready to go to launch January 1st and it is now almost April. So just goes to show you like how long and a backlog there has been, at least in terms of what we're doing, which is fitness. So today I'm gonna to be going through that last program with you and you'll be able to join me in part three if you subscribe to my new workout platform. So there'll be more details of that to come uh, on my social media content. And if you follow along or subscribe to our mailing list, our newsletter, uh, and all of those details can be found in the description of this video. But let's get started on this workout. I have a full body program coming to you today. It is gonna be pretty hefty. I have nine exercises to get through. Uh, I basically hit one of everything except for my biceps, which some of you know, I'm not really prioritizing those at the moment. Everything else is a little bit more important. So I've got three working sets of nearly all these exercises. Uh, working in the hypertrophy rep range today, so anywhere between eight and 15, even up to 20 reps on some of those movements. Um, and at a pretty high RPE, sadly, it is the last week, so it is the hardest week. So I've got my work cut out for me. Let's go and get started. All right, guys, so we're gonna be starting out with the staggered barbell RDL. So I've just moved that around and dragged and dropped it just because the platform is actually free for the first time in a long time. So uh, I wanna make the most of this free platform and actually do that first. I had a tall uh, hip machine abduction uh, originally first as a bit of a warm up uh, for the glutes, but uh, we're gonna start here first today. And again, that's one of the new features in the app. You can kind of move things around as needed. You can add exercises, you can delete them. You can change the exercises around. You've got all these different options um, to even replace the exercise. So real quick, let me show you something right here in the app. You can also tap this button here and hit replace and it's going to go ahead and show you uh, a bunch of exercises. I've got no internet service in here so it's not showing me correctly but it'll show you basically all the movements um, that are comparable to that exercise. So super helpful if you are actually have limited access to different equipment or you just prefer something else. Okay, so up first, uh, I'm going to be loading up the bar with 45, so 135 pounds. Um, I usually like to do two or three warm-up sets before I dive into a working set. Um, and I've also got my collars here uh, ready to go. If you don't have collars, these are like 10 bucks on Amazon. So I would highly recommend grabbing yourself some of these just for safety. Uh, and also some of the collars that are available in the gyms suck. Like they don't have any grip, they just slide off. So um, particularly for some of the more high risk exercises like a squat or a deadlift or a barbell bench press, um, these are really important. So I might even put a link in the description of this YouTube video um, so that you can go and grab yourself some. They're very, very versatile. And then the second thing that I'm gonna go ahead and use are my Versa grips. I've got the Pros, but the Classics are pretty good too. These are a little bit more expensive. Honestly, they just give you more color varieties. Um, there isn't a whole lot of difference in like the materials or anything like that. So. Uh, for everybody who uh, needs or has been asking about what I use for my wraps, these have been something I've used for years and I have tried every single variation of wraps from the figure eights to the loops to grips, gloves, everything. <laughs> and of course, these tend to be the best. They are super grippy. So they just loop in nice and simply, just like that.
Okay, so one of the things obviously that I am pretty consistent at using are the Versa Grips. And I think a lot of people, and I have had so much criticism from this over the years, it's ridiculous, probably from the powerlifting community, um, but they say, oh, it's just cheating when you use wraps. If you are trying to train a certain muscle group, and in this exercise, I'm trying to hit my hamstrings, I wanna get them to failure, then the load that my hamstrings can handle is going to be substantially more than the load my grip strength can handle. Now, I could try to do this weight without grips, but I'd probably get to six or seven reps and I'd have to put it down because I've lost grip strength. But my hamstrings, if that was the case and I finished the set, I wouldn't be getting to failure and I'm not getting the appropriate number of repetitions done to effectively elicit muscle growth. So, y'all, I'm gonna be using these for anything where I know that the muscle group is stronger than my hands, which is pretty much every muscle group. So, you'll see me using those throughout this workout today. So I always tease Sam because we have such differences in our strength. The way that he stacks the bar, like so that we can continue to work in it with one another, is so funny. Um, I guess previously my experiences with some lifters is that they're like OCD about stacking up all of the weights and they've got to be facing a certain way, uh, like in just sticklers and unnecessarily so. So I actually like, want to give Sam credit because he just throws it on however it needs to be to get it done. Like, you know, it doesn't get caught up on the minutia. So <laughs> I find it funny. <laughs> So I've just popped in all of my loads for the session. Again, you can add sets. You can also add drop sets. You select add set. You get an option um, so that you can kind of remember what your sets were. <laughs> uh, and then it also tells you your volume, which is really important if you're trying to make progress in all of your uh, lifts, whether it's for hypertrophy or for strength. So moving on to our next exercise, we have the good old hip abduction exercise. <laughs> there are lots of different ways that you can do this movement. You can do it in a forward leaning position. You can do it in a tall position. You can also do it in a little leaning back position. It's a little bit harder on this machine because the seat angle, but some of them do allow you to do that. Um, and I guess it just slightly targets a different area within your glute. So something that I have experienced personally. Now I can't necessarily pull up any like hard evidence to, to support this, though I'm sure if we did EMG and some hypertrophy to, um, studies on uh, this muscle group and on this machine, it might prove uh, my point here. But anecdotally, when I'm leaning in a forward position, so I'm kind of right over, I am really lengthening my glutes. And I can actually feel a lot more of my glute max um, working when I do the forward leaning position. Now that's a bigger muscle group, so I can use a lot heavier load. Now, if I transition to the upright position, I've got less of that glute max. Like I can't feel that working as much and I'm a little bit more reliant. And again, I say anecdotally, <laughs> I'd have to go and find some studies to support what I'm saying, but I'm trying to think about how it feels when I'm doing it. Um, I'm not using my glute max. I'm more reliant on my glute medius, which is a smaller muscle. So I can't load the weight as heavy as I could in that forward leaning position. So I like to mix up, I guess, in, with, between exercises and between, sorry, between programs, um, the different positions for that reason. You know, if I really want to isolate my abductors and maybe you're somebody that's got less growth and you'd like more hypertrophy to kind of give you that shape at the side, then do more of this upright version. Um, but if you'd like more glute uh, maximus growth, I'd probably suggest other exercises first, hip extension, but you can uh, increase the use of that um, glute max by leaning forwards a bit more on this machine. So I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna go do it. <laughs> Rather than kind of swaying and using momentum, I'm gonna kind of keep nice and tight 
core braced and I also just like to keep my arms in close to me. I just feel more stable that way. There's nothing magical about it. I mean, if you've got long arms, I don't. <laughs> you could probably re reach forwards and hold on to the machine in front of you, but I just keep my arms in here. It feels really secure this way and I can really brace. Ooh, little pause at the end there just to get the most I couldn't have done another rep but that little uh, isometric hold kind of took me to failure okay Sam you are relatively new to glute training I'm gonna say you've had what a good 18 months now of pretty specific glute work do you like this machine number one part two which variation of this exercise do you like better and why? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> do I grab this or are you hold it? You can, you can hold it, yeah. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this exercise. I would actually prefer just using the bands. Yeah? Yeah. Welcome. More comfortable. Um, I don't know if it's angles or something in this machine, mm -hmm. but getting comfortable in the seat yeah. is, is always tricky. So just sitting on a bench with a band. Yeah, yeah and, and then my range of motion too. For, for some reason for me, I can open up. We're not gonna film it, of course, but I can only open up like so far. Um, and I feel like with the bands, I don't have those limitations. So I don't know, maybe I'm still getting, as uh, far as this movement, the abduction movement, I like bands more than this machine or any machine I've tried. What, what about you? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, again, not every machine is going to work for you. You know, we all have different anatomy. We're all put together a little bit differently. And if an exercise that you're doing is supposed to, you're meant to feel it in a certain muscle group. If you are not feeling it in that muscle group, and again, make sure that you're loading correctly. And I mean, you could be loading too heavy or too light. So play around with your loads, those types of things. But if you're not feeling it, change your position. Um, I have played around so much with different movements. Um, and this machine comes, oh, I mean, there's so many brands that exist for a hip abduction. I have to sit almost at the very edge with my butt hanging off the end just so that I can actually get good range of motion. So, I mean, I agree with you, Sam, this isn't put together very well to optimize the abduction movement. Um, it's just mechanically doesn't feel good. So I'm probably with you in this, Brad. I think for this, if I had a choice, um, despite having to do so many reps with a band, which is a little bit inefficient with, of my time, I probably, I still prefer <laughs> the bands too, just because this is really tough to use. So. Yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Everyone has slight differences. And if you don't like the hip abduction, don't feel like you have to do it because your coach said you have to do it. There's so many ways you can train your muscle groups um, through exploration of different equipment and machinery. Alrighty, so we're gonna skip on ahead to like five exercises five exercises down the line or the queue in this program because all the machines are a little taken at the moment. Um, so that brings me to the T-bar row. So uh, I'm gonna be doing a wide grip T-bar row today. Um, now, this is not a piece of machinery or a piece of equipment that you probably have access to. If you do, great. Um, it's less common. I've never had the luxury of having this in like every gym that I've ever trained at. Um, particularly if you're just at a commercial gym, like a non-bodybuilding gym. So again, one of the great things about our new training application, Be A Fit, is that it gives you the options to choose another exercise that's going to target the exact same muscle group. And it will show you those exercises based on the movement pattern as well. Um, and then it will move to the secondary muscle groups that it target, targets. Uh, and then of course, matching that movement pattern. So uh, lots of really good suggestions. Um, if you didn't have access to that, there is this piece of equipment here, which might be a little bit more common. Um, so this is a bench supported T-bar row. Um, I think for the ladies, I mean, I don't, I feel like everybody can probably agree with me here. I don't like anything that my chest has to be on a bench. It is so uncomfortable. You just got like titties squishing out everywhere and I'm not about that. <laughs> so if I have an option where I can just freely take the barb through the plant, uh, range of motion, I will, but this would also be a perfectly um, good alternative if you didn't have access to the, the T-bar rod I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. 
Alrighty, so one of the things I think is really important with any of these kind of wide grip movements, or any rowing movement, pulling movement for that matter, um, is to make sure that you've got your chest kind of lifted and proud. So Sam, I might actually, you've, you've got a really good technique, so I may as well just show you doing this. So he's gonna try and keep really stable in that position so he's not kind of using too much momentum. Again, you can do four strats, but you wanna start and make it harder for yourself, get to, get to failure sooner um, by kind of keeping it more isolated, so less momentum. So keep your chest out, wide arms, and I'll show you what I mean. So he's in that like bent over stance, keeping it pretty strict, using his core, the really bracing, and that's a really good looking uh, row. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Alrighty guys, let's do some quick gym etiquette. See this beautiful, big, sweaty, disgusting mess? Look how easy this was. It's not my sweaty mess, but I'm just gonna wipe it down. And then usually, when you finish a set, just get into the habit of wiping things down. No one wants COVID, no one wants other gross diseases, no one wants, I don't know, what's been on your hands. <laughs> It's not hard. All right, as I try to recover my respiratory tract, which is dying and failing me right now, whew, we've got Smith Machine box squats. So nothing super magical about a Smith Machine box squat. Um, like all the different squat variations, they target primarily your glutes, which I actually have a video that's going up uh, probably sometime around this video that talks about the differences in glute activation and glute growth compared to a hip thrust. But they target the glutes, they target the quads, depending on your technique, whether you're a forward leaning squatter or a high bar squatter and really upright, or whether you throw wedges under your heels, they all kind of do the same thing. So part of the reason why I have lots of different exercises in my program is it's just for the enjoyment but I also do want to hit a certain training volume on my glutes and quads at the moment for my competition. So lots of squat variations in my program. Um, they burn a lot of calories, bigger muscle group, more so than just doing like an isolation exercise, like a leg extension um, or like a banded glute hip thrust. Um, just, they're, they're a lot more complicated. There's a multi-joint movement. This is, this is a multi-joint movement. Um, so a greater potential for me to burn calories and also help me stay in a calorie deficit. So just gonna stop talking, I'll do, and then I might show you uh, some tips, I guess, to how to execute this movement properly. So one of the things that you can do a little bit differently with this exercise, uh, is when you get to the bottom and your butt touches the seat, you can pause. Now that pause takes away the stretch reflex, which actually gives you a little bit of oomph to come back up, believe it or not. Um, so if you pause at the bottom, it's actually gonna make that exercise harder. So again, it's not better than doing touch go, which is what I'm doing today. It would just mean you get to failure faster. So. Again, if we're thinking about the important, I guess, very, uh, the important considerations for growing muscle, it is just fatiguing the muscle. So if you're time poor, you might want to do the pause rep uh, variation because it's going to mean that you finish the set a little faster. I can do more reps at, a, at the same load by doing touch and go. And that is true for deadlifts as well. If you are someone that's maybe done both of those techniques um, on any deadlift variation. All right, so if you are dieting and you've been dieting for a little while, your subjective energy levels within a session may very well increase, actually increase subjective energy levels. Um, the reason for that is you're at low on calories, you're restricted in energy. It is just harder to muster the energy to do a set. Now that doesn't actually mean that you've truly lost strength, 
Um, I know right now I'm probably going to adjust my load from what I might have done back in week one. I am week 12 of this prep now. So it's not that I've potentially lost all my strength suddenly. Um, that would be true if I had dieted a really, really long time and I had dieted in a really extreme way or extreme fashion that would put me at risk of actually losing lean tissue. And it would be that lean tissue loss that would be contributing to the drop in strength. But I haven't dieted in an aggressive way. I've been dieting for a short-ish period of time uh, and it's been at a pretty low weekly rate of weight loss. So I don't believe I've lost a, a meaningful amount of muscle mass during this prep. So the, the reduction in my overall weight selections isn't necessarily a bad thing. I haven't lost all my strength. Uh, it's just my subjective energy levels have started to tank. <laughs> Sorry. We'll see how I go with this next set. Oh my gosh, totally parched. Need to have my drink, which has also gone missing. It's about standard for me. Every session that I do, I will knock over my drink. And I always have like a can of diet soda or something. I'm just like, God dang it. So I have to go and explore the gym and find out where I left it. But you know, that was actually okay. I loaded up the weight that I usually do. I got the set done, but it was probably like an RPE 9.5. <laughs> So a lot harder, but I am going to drop it down for this final set. Um, I don't want to injure myself. This is a spine loaded exercise. Um, it just, it's a higher risk exercise. Um, and as you start to fatigue, you're just putting yourself at greater risk of injury. So right now I want to stay healthy for this prep as long as possible and not get an injury. So I'm just going to be smart about my training today, making an adjustment of, I don't know, 30 pounds or what have you. Um, probably isn't going to make a meaningful change in my energy expenditure, but it sure as heck might cause me to get an injury or prevent one by going back down. So that's what I'm going to do for my last set. We're, ha we're hanging out in this same area quite a bit today. It's actually quite convenient because there's lots of seats. So we're going to be doing a Smith machine bench press next. Um, I could do a barbell bench press variation if I wanted. I could do dumbbell variation if I wanted. But again, this is really convenient. It's a really nice movement path. Um, great for beginners if you haven't had a lot of experience with unilateral exercises, which does require a little bit more um, skill, um, more muscle recruitment um, and more stabilizing. So anything where you're using free weights is going to be a bit more challenging. So even though I'm not a beginner, I just really like this exercise and again, just as much as you, I'm looking for a program that's exciting and it, it keeps me engaged, it keeps me motivated to come and train. Um, and though I'm wearing towards the end of this program, like I said, this is the last day of a six week block, um, I still really enjoyed this because I don't do this variation all that often. So you're gonna see me going down just to below my chest height. You don't wanna come in down in the mid chest, you want it low, um, so keep your chest up. I do like a hybrid powerlifting bench press. And what I mean by that is I arch my back a lot more and it just reduces the range of motion. Um, I'm a lot stronger in that shortened position. Um, I just, that's how I've always listed because I've done powerlifting, but you can also do it with a completely flat back on the bench. Um, it will mean you've got greater range of motion. Um, it will mean that you are not as strong uh, because you are taking that barbell all the way down through the full range. Um, and when you get to that lengthened position, which is when you're down here, um, you've got less, I guess, overlap in your muscle fibers, less contractibility. It's just not as strong. I guess that's the simplest way that I can put it. Um, so you won't be able to lift as much. Neither is right or wrong. Um, again, we're trying to get to failure. So both are perfectly reasonable ways to do it. If you've got a powerlifting background, then powerlift version is probably better. If you don't, don't stress, do it with a flat back. So for your first five sets, sorry, five reps for this exercise, um, I guess you, you want to use those as a warm up. You can see uh, when I started to do a few, a few reps, uh, I wasn't in the right position uh, and I had to actually shimmy on back to make sure that the bar was coming down and hitting just below my chest. So lighter loads, probably 50% of what your working load is going to be. And then again, this is a fresh muscle group. We haven't really used our chest in anything else today. Um, I'm more 
I guess, comfortable moving into another exercise and not doing multiple warm-up sets if I've already trained those muscle groups. But we haven't really done anything uh, with our chest today. So I'm gonna make sure I do one more warm-up set before I hit my working set. And this warm-up set will be like a set of three. All right, that's my warm-ups done. Oh my God, as my spine breaks. God, one thing, I am so sore at the moment with all the training, just under-recovered, low caloric intake. The training programs just catch up with you. So yeah, I feel like I'm about 90 at the moment. Alrighty, so you can see through this exercise, I have, uh, I guess, a pyramid rep scheme. So we've got 12 reps for the first set, 10 reps for the second set, and eight for the final. I'm actually gonna hit the heavy set first, uh, just because I am starting to feel a little fatigued, and it's also easier for me and Sam to coordinate our weights <laughs> that way, since he's got like three plates and I have one. So I'm gonna start with that eight rep set first. At, I think it's 130. 35, way to go, there we go. We're doing this program a little bit out of order and again, I just wanna re-emphasize, exercise order is less important for hypertrophy. Um, I've put up many videos before, you probably hear me say this in all of my videos, but I like to repeat it because there's always new people coming in and watching. Um, less important exercise order when it comes to hypertrophy. It's a lot more important for strength. So that's not to say that you shouldn't give some attention to your exercise order. Again, I do think that compound exercises probably warrant positioning in the first part of your training program, just because they're a more complicated exercise, they're multi-joint, there's a lot more skill involved, uh, and it is a higher risk of injury. So you don't really want to be putting like a deadlift or a squat like at the very end of your program, just because you're potentially putting yourself in a position where you're just going to and that's not great. <laughs> so that said, we've got uh, the Smith Machine calf raise next. Um, we've got a couple of different really cool machines here for calf raises, but I don't uh, particularly like one of them. And then the other one's out of order. <laughs> so it's just convenient that we're doing everything here under the one machine today and it's very quiet, so I'm not causing anyone to hate me. <laughs> but we're gonna make sure that the plates that you're using, and again, if you don't have a proper um, like a Reebok step that gives you a few inches, like a four or five inch step. You can use the weight plate, but you just position them so that you've got this flat section facing directly towards the way you wanna go. So see how there's this like crease in my weight plates? You don't wanna have this section facing forwards. You want to make sure that this flat section uh, is facing forward so that you can get a really good grip and that your toe and the foot um, isn't kind of falling through. You want lots of stability here so you can drive up through that calf. Uh, I had to do 20 reps with that weight. It was really light, <laughs> sorry. Again, I, I could still, it's not that that was an ineffective rep range by going higher. Um, it's just inefficient. If I can load up and do 12 reps, I'm gonna get the same kind of outcome than going to 20. So I misloaded. I honestly didn't check my program to see what I had previously been doing. Would have been helpful. It is also right there in my program. It shows you your previous week's best set. Um, so we've gone up and added 25 for this next. So hopefully I do like 12 to 15. So there was a paper that I read not so long ago that talks about hypertrophy of the calf. Uh, and the, uh, I guess there were three different groups. One group were required to do, I guess their toes turned out. One group were required to do their toes neutral. And then the final third group were required to do toes facing in or pigeon toed, super uncomfortable. And interestingly, the groups that did forward facing and then out facing uh, achieved similar growth outcomes. Whereas the pronated 
didn't really achieve a whole lot. <laughs> so if you've been prescribed like toes in, toes neutral, toes facing out, you can probably scratch the toes in variation in terms of great muscle growth outcomes. So thought I would throw that in there. I've stopped doing it. I used to do that too. And again, as evidence becomes available, it's nice to just make sure that we're optimizing our training and not wasting time in the gym. Oh, he's already got the voiceover. Oh, yeah, but so he knows to lay it up. Yeah. Oh, that's, this is neutral. This is the pigeon toe. And then this was toes facing out. Again, a little bit out of order, uh, we're doing this uh, machine lateral raise. So I think one of the important things, again, is to make sure that you play around and uh, adjust the height of the seat um, so that you feel really stable. Um, I know, again, for somebody that's got really short tib fib, um, surprisingly short bones <laughs> between here and here for me. I often find it hard to touch the ground. Um, so this is really good. The seat actually does adjust up and down. Some of them don't. Um, a great example is like when you do a wide grip cable pull down. Um, some of the pads that kind of press onto your knees don't reach my knees. So I'm like a little, I don't know, frailing jellyfish or something in those exercises. Thank you, Tim. So, adjust your seat height and then also something else come take a look at this when again for a normal sized human you would be able to grab these handles right here and like comfortably take your arm out but again because i have a really short bone like look at this this is really tiny when i actually hold on and grip the handles here um i hardly have any leverage like the pad is almost at my elbow so it's actually more comfortable for me to bring my elbows back in here so they're by my sides and then I can kind of lift up like this rather than trying to hold on to these grips that are meant for somebody that's like maybe eight foot <laughs> or something like that or Sam. Sam has like the longest arms I've ever seen. So this is perfect for him, <laughs> but not so me. So again, play around with the positioning of your machines to make sure that it feels like it's targeting the muscle group. You're sitting there, do it. So the final exercise for today's program in a very strange order is the seated hamstring, hamstring curl machine. So again, I've been talking about adjusting the, uh, I guess, machines to suit your proportions. And this is one of these exercises where I feel like I've got to basically turn the machine inside out, upside down and then invert it for it to actually work because <laughs> I have really, really long and stretchy hamstrings and also a long femur. So I'm actually gonna make sure that I move the foot plate out like away from my body to cater to the length of my legs. Um, I'm also gonna make sure that I push this down as hard as it can onto my knee, but not on my kneecap, like just above so that there's good comfort and I can really drive in. And then the seat back. Uh, this needs to come forwards and ideally kind of wedge right in on that pelvis. This doesn't do that. So I've been known to put like a, I don't know, a sponge or something behind me just so that I've got more support because I do have quite a duck butt. Um, so you probably see me start to lean forwards to lengthen my hamstrings towards the last few reps as I can feel my back starting to take over a little bit. And by me shifting my weight forwards, it kind of puts the focus and isolates my hamstrings again. So in the first few reps, I can sit back normally and perform the movement the way that it's described in this great picture. And then I'll adjust as um, my body starts to fail me <laughs> so that I keep it in my hemis. We found this man in the gym. It probably has a few diseases, but um, either way, it'll put Holly in a more lengthy position and help her with this movement. Um, so mechanically, it's gonna work for her. So we'll try it out. That's putting so much more tension on my hamstrings. If I'm leaning back, I don't really feel a whole lot of stretch in this position. Now, you might feel a lot of stretch sitting in this position at home if you've got tight hammies or maybe you're just geared that way. Um, I am literally Gumby. So you'll even notice when I do RDLs or any kind of stiff-legged exercise, like I can do 
deficit audios with like I'm sleeping. It's really easy. I don't know why. Probably from years of ballet dancing and dancing and doing the splits and all that good stuff. So um, yeah, that, that's already made a big difference. And you'll see me go from here to here towards the end to really kind of get the last out of my hamstrings, not my back. A cool feature about Holly's new app is, so it has a time for your entire workout, but also within each exercise, you can start the rest timer and keep track of how much rest you have between your sets. Um, there's been a lot of focus and discussion about rest periods lately. Um, I tend to think it's of little consequence as long as you're in a hypertrophic rep range. So, you know, you if you rest longer, you can probably keep the weight similar. If you rest for a shorter period of time, um, you're going to probably need to decrease the weight in order to remain in a hypertrophic rep range. So, you know, there's this idea out there that you need to rest at least two minutes if you're training for muscle growth, but that's simply not true. If you rest for a minute, maybe you need to lower the weight and you can still perform enough reps for that next set to be hypertrophic. Um, but yeah, just a cool feature and, you know, some people may not actually track the rest and this will make you more aware of how much time are you taking between your exercise sets. And then when you hear a study, you can relate a little bit more to that study, because you know I rested for about one minute between my sets. And that was the last set. You guys got no idea how ready I am to go home. We have worked all weekend, or at least it feels like it's been like eight hours of work this weekend. So I am ready for a break, a wine, <laughs> and some beach. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed following me along on my Miss Bikini Olympia workout. Um, if you've got questions or you'd like to learn something specific about your training, please, please leave me a comment in the description below. Um, I'm going to be doing my brand new program next week, which is very exciting. So if you aren't following me over on the Instagram platform, please follow me, watch my stories. That is where I'm most active and I give away a lot of information to help you achieve your own goals. So stick around and learn more a little bit about Be A Fit, my brand new training app. I cannot believe it is finally launched. We've taken a good amount of time to perfect this, to make sure that it does exactly what you need it to do and through following an evidence-based approach. So until next time, I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.